Hello, my keto peeps. Welcome to What's Up Wednesday. I'm Heather and things are about to get real. So we are within striking distance of three holidays. And yes, I consider Halloween a holiday of, of sorts. Um, but this is the time of year when my already busy life seems to just hit the chaos button and just go completely crazy. I already have so much to do, just like so many of you with children and families and businesses and all sorts of things. And then you have to, on top of that, decorate, shop, party plan, party hop, check your list twice, wrap presents, get presents, the, the whole works. And then you try to add the food factor in on top of that. Somebody could lose their mind. I, I've almost lost my mind a couple of years in a row. Um, and it never fails. For me, I go into January. It was, it, it was like clockwork. It was like a groundhog day every year. January was spent most of the time in bed recuperating from whatever virus or illness that was going around that really took me out. I was primed for it. I was exhausted and I had indulged in every possible holiday treat starting from October 1st with the candy kickoff for Halloween all the way up until that New Year's eggnog. So I would eat a ton of crap, a ton of sugar. I would stay up late. I would get up early. I would push myself to the limits. And January was, was really kind of like my pause button and I needed it. Um, I really couldn't do much else. And a lot of times, uh, February felt like I was coming out of the fog and that's when I usually would have the new year's resolution of, of that's when I would begin the gym membership or starting a new way of life, a new diet, whatever it may be. Those pounds really, really took a toll after all is said and done and everything settled. So if you're like me, you've probably had something like that happen to you. You might not be in bed that whole time, but January 1 is usually a hangover of multiple proportions. It's usually hangover from alcohol if you're indulging and also food hangover and hangover from just the, the chaotic life. So there's a way to survive holiday madness and I've done it. I've done it now. This is going into my third year and I'm... I'm pretty excited about, about this holiday season, just like the last two. They've been really great. Um, the, the first one was like that first year of doing keto. When keto happened to me and I went into January of 2015 going, oh my gosh, I'm not sick. I'm not fat. I'm not hating myself. Um, I'm weighing less than I ever did and I'm healthier than I ever was and I have more energy and by the way those all those Christmas decorations down by January 2nd done like my because I I'm not one to like let my decorations sit around I am a decorating fool however um so the minute you know Thanksgiving meals over I'm already I've already got the Christmas stuff pulled out and I'm getting ready to throw that up I've got Halloween decorations. I, I'm not quite so crazy with the Halloween decorations, but there's still some of that going on. But Christmas really is a thing. And it's usually the decorating, would it, the taking down the decorations. The decorating was already like a hard thing to think about doing, but taking them down when you're already feeling, or when I was already feeling really crappy was not great. So what did I do different? I did a lot of things different. Um, but the big thing that I did different was I changed what I was eating and what I was doing. So it started with Halloween. Instead of getting the type of candy that I liked and that I would eat, I got things like the multi-packs of Dum Dums and Smarties and Tootsie Rolls, all the things that all the kids hate. <laughs> and all, all the neighbors are like, oh, great, she's that lady. Um, that's what I get them because I didn't want to be tempted. I didn't want to be taken out by a Kit Kat or a Snickers and just in the beginning of, of my keto life, there was, that was just not going to happen for me. So it started with thinking about what am I bringing into the house? And I didn't bring the candy into the house until the day of Halloween. Whereas all the years previous, as soon as they put that Halloween candy out in the stores, which is what, like two days after Labor Day or something like that, I would, I would get the bags of candy and miraculously they would be gone, you know, well before, before October 31st. And most of the times I was making multiple trips back to the store, getting different bags of different things. Cause 
I, I was a candy connoisseur. I liked a lot of things. And so I wasn't discriminating like baby Ruth's Reese's Twix, you name it. I had it. Snickers. Those were the best. So that was, those were two things that I did differently. I waited until October 31st to get the candy and really waited late until October 31st and got stuff that I didn't think I would want or be tempted to eat. So that's one way to get through Halloween. Um, this, the, over the, the past couple of years, I've also created some really great dessert sweet treats. I, I call them sweet treats, but they're, you know, sugar-free and they're keto and they're fabulous. Um, my keto macadamia nut fudge, my keto fat bombs, those are things that chocolate based stuff that if I'm craving, then I can eat that. I also trust myself a little bit more these days, but not entirely. Like I still have my weak moments. So I'm, I'm still not going to get Snickers. That's, I'm, I don't think we're going to hand those out this year. I'm almost positive because I'll be buying it and pretty sure that's not going to happen. So then the second thing is Thanksgiving. Now, Thanksgiving to me always was turkey, mashed potatoes, gravy, stuffing. I make the best stuffing. And that's, those are, that's one of the things that I kind of do miss still. Um, but I also know what it did to me. And so I'm really like, I don't really miss it, but I miss it. If I'm going to eat turkey and gravy and mashed potatoes, then there's going to be stuffing and there's going to be rolls and there's going to be pumpkin pie and pecan pie. And pretty soon I'm in a food coma and can't move for three days. So that's what Thanksgiving was to me before keto. And what I found was I made some new traditions. That first year I made my roasted pork tenderloin. And I, and here's the thing. So I have my family that doesn't do strictly keto. I mean, they eat what I make, um, but they like other things. So I had enough of my keto stuff that I could be happy, but I also added things in for them, like some mashed potatoes. I had my stepdad bring the mashed potatoes and my sister who wasn't doing keto yet. I had her bring the green bean casserole that everybody loves. Um, so I had them bring a couple of the things that they liked, but I created that first year, I created a keto sugar-free um, pumpkin pie that was delicious. Um, I whipped my own uh, cream from just whipping cream and stevia and some vanilla, and that was amazing. Um, so I didn't feel, I didn't feel deprived. I did the roast pork tenderloin. I did a uh, curried zucchini leek soup. Um, I did a, a big salad. I did roasted Brussels sprouts. I did enough of the other side dishes that I didn't feel deprived. I didn't, I didn't go into a food coma, believe it or not. I was like, I actually got through that meal feeling really good. Felt great that night. Felt great the next day. And Everybody decided at that Thanksgiving that we didn't need turkey to make it Thanksgiving, that Thanksgiving was all of us being together, sharing the food that we all loved. And what we loved about the food was that it was good for us and that we weren't getting sick and we weren't, you know, feeling like we wanted to pass out at five o'clock at night. So that was my first year. And that was my first like real experience with Thanksgiving. And then come Christmas, it was the same kind of thing. Now Christmas over that, over the month of December, I played around with some recipes for um, keto sugar-free cookies. And I did, I came up with an ice pumpkin cookie that was just really great. Um, if it's not on my blog yet, it will be up uh, the month of November. So look for that. Um, it's also in my cookbook, Kicking It in the Kitchen Keto Style. If you haven't been to my website, it starts with food.com. head over there. I've got a blog that I put out every Wednesday, and I've got every other week I do recipes. And I really try to give you some tools and tips and strategies to eat every day, real world eating, and make you like, you know, kind of appreciate food and the people around you will appreciate the food. Hi, Paula. <laughs> Hi, Taryn. Thanks for joining, guys. Um, so the, the website's great for that. They've got the blog. I also have videos on one of the, my, on my website. And the videos, I do some cooking videos. Um, I've got videos on the different strategies that I use. So there's something for everybody. And then I also have my resources, which are my books and guides. Those are my uh, staying keto while you're traveling guide. Um, my cookbook, and then also my how-to keto, pretty much. I mean, that, that's what a lot of people want to know if you're just starting out. So those are those, so those things I have already for you. And 
knowing that keto is out there, you can then refer to that. So if you know that you're the cookie person, come December, if you're looking for a holiday cookie and you've got a pumpkin ice cookie that you can turn to and know that it's keto and low carb and, and sugar-free, then then you, you've got something to fall back on. I also have amazing things like cheesecake bites and pumpkin cheesecake and pumpkin pie. I mean, there's so many different things between that and then the, the chocolate key, uh, chocolate plantain muffins. Um, there's plenty to be had, plenty of treats to be had. So I don't want you feeling like you're going into this holiday season and you're going to be tempted around every corner. You probably will be, but if at least you know that you've got things that you can fall back on or that you can make, sometimes quickly or have in the freezer so you can pull out like the fat bombs. Those are great to have in the freezer. Um, and those are really good to, you know, for satisfying any kind of sugar, chocolate craving that you might have while everybody else is indulging in the real stuff and then having that sugar crash later, you're just going to sail on through and you're going to, it's all going to be cool for you. And, and everybody else is going to look at you and Come January 1st, while they're all making resolutions to lose weight and, and get healthy, you're going to be there. And that's going to be the best part about it. You're not going to spend January in bed like I did. So December, have a plan for, you know, different parties. We've got, we're going into party season. Um, that's stressful. I know planning parties, I've got stuff that I'm planning right now. And I want to make sure that I offer things for people that are staying in that healthy keto lane. And they're not going to feel deprived or left out that they're actually going to be the cool people at my party, that they're going to get the good stuff. They're going to get the organic. They're going to get the, the homemade Heather stuff. So if you're watching and you're planning on attending one of my parties, you're going to want to ask me where the keto stuff is. That's FYI. But everybody else, if, you're not, if you don't care, I don't care. You want to eat whatever, I'll have whatever. But I'm going to have stuff for me and I'm going to have stuff for my people and it's going to be awesome. So, you know, come to my party if you can, but the party planning is stressful, making sure that there's something for everybody, but going to a party, a lot of times we go to holiday parties and people ask us to bring dishes. There's nothing worse than bringing a dish that you've made to share with others. And then you find you're the only one eating it. And then you have to do that walk of shame out of the party when the host or hostess hands you that full plate back to take to the house and it's, I've been there. It's not fun. But what I've, where I've also been is on the other end of that, of bringing my keto dish and everybody eating it first and having no idea that that's what it is. Um, so there's so many different recipes to do that. So that's, you got to know what you're going to do well in advance of when it happens. So you know you've got parties coming up. You know you're planning parties. You know you're going to be invited to parties. You know that you're going to be around Christmas cookies and holiday cookies and candies and all Halloween stuff. What's your plan? Because I promise you, if you don't have a plan, what you've always done in the past, you will continue to do until you make changes, until you decide that this year is going to be different. It will be the same. I trust me, I'm now 47. So I had lots of years of the same. And the difference between pre-keto and post-keto is night and day. I don't worry about January 1st anymore. I don't worry about spending spending the entire month of January in bed. My family doesn't either. I think that there's enough resources and there's enough of us out there now that we can be super supportive. When you show up to a party, I promise you there's probably at least one other person, if not more, either doing keto or low carb or sugar free. So you can become their best friend and their hero by bringing something amazing or having a party and having that little special table for those people. It's a great way to bond and it's a great way to spread the word and get people into that, that healthy vein of, of living. So that's just a little bit of my holiday stuff, uh, tips and, and strategies to survive some of the holiday madness. I will be, like I said, I'll be posting every other week, I'll be posting recipes that have to do with holidays and, and meal planning and things like that. And if you aren't already a member of It Starts With a Food Success Group, which by the way, you can find on my website, it starts with food.com under work with me. 
um, you might want to join, especially if you're going into the holiday season and, and really don't have any idea of what you're going to do. I just created November's meal plan. My members get a meal plan every month, the first Monday of every month. And November is going to be really, uh, it's, it's all about kind of holiday eating and, and some really great ideas and meal plans for holidays. And you can try them out before you get to Thanksgiving. It's like, it's like a, a dry run or, you know, like a rehearsal dinner before the actual dinner. Just try, try some different dishes and, and, and go, oh, this would be great for a main meal. And I love this as a side and I love this as a side. And these are great desserts. Figure it out beforehand. And then when Thanksgiving rolls around or Christmas or any other holiday dinner that you've got going on, you will know what you've, what you've been able to try out. So members get the email. So if you sign up before, I think it's November 5th, you will get the, the meal plan on Monday the 7th. Um, and I would hate for you to miss out. And by the way, when you join, you also get my cookbook. You also get my, my ketogenic solutions, which is the how to keto and my travel guide, because I know there's a lot of us out there that are going to be traveling over the next couple months. And the last thing you'd want to do is get out into that, that world and not know what to do and, and not know how to eat out there and then come home and feel like you have to start all over. And then you got the holidays and that's an easy an easy out to, well, it's, you know, I already, you know, went off the rails. I just might as well keep going. And then January 1st, you really will be making those resolutions. So contact me, get in touch with me, book a discovery call. You can do a 30 minute free discovery call with me. You can do that on the work with me page as well. But at the very least, check out the recipes. I really think that you'll surprise yourself and your family with your cooking skills because it doesn't take much. My stuff is not hard. And you'll surprise your friends and family and they won't even know that you're actually doing something good for them. So until next week, next week's going to be some more holiday travel uh, stuff for you. So you're definitely not going to want to miss that. Until next week, take care, peeps.